You also mentioned that in that camp of reformists, if you want to call it, there are also the businessmen. Yes. Well, Anton Rupert, you know, I, you know, he he was very kind to me. He was, you know, uh, and helped tried to help me where he could. And I asked him to write to P.W. Boerter about the Sharp Bill Six, and he did, and got an extremely, you know, rude reply. But but Anton Rupert understood, you know, that South Africa couldn't prosper in isolation. You know, there had to be a way of breaking down the is isolation. And uh, his son Johan also had a huge row with uh, Magnus Milan, who threatened him. You know, unless you mend your reformist ways, you and so on. You know. Let's talk to about Mandela. You mentioned what I found very interesting in your book is this duality of character of Mandela had, that there was one side of Mandela and the other, and at some point the real Mandela stood out. We got on very well, not difficult to get on with Mandela, but Mandela was doing this because he thought that we had more influence with the government than others did, and therefore you know, he needed help removing roadblocks in the negotiations and so on. He also needed practical help. You know, When he came out of jail, he, we were asked to train his bodyguards, to look after physical security, including at his house and so on, and to help him in those sort of ways, which we did. Um, now, I found in my meetings with him, first of all, after two meetings in Soweto, I said to him, you know, why don't we go and have a meal in the best restaurant in Johannesburg? He thought that was a great idea. You know, it was his first meal, he told me, in a restaurant for 27 years. And we walked into this place. It's called Linga Longa in Bromfontein. And uh, Mandela did what everybody learned later was his method. You know, he walked from table to table, greeting everybody, everybody individually, and, and saying in one or two cases, oh, I've heard all about you, because he read all the newspapers in jail. And then, of course, at the end, and these were people most of whom had voted to keep him in jail. And then at the end of the meal, he dived into the into the you know, kitchen to thank everybody who prepared it. So this was sort of classic Mandela performance. Um, but I found that in his political s statements and so on, <coughs> he did two things really. Uh, he did make very sort of harsh public statements, quite aggressive and quite very partisan from time to time. And it, actually, his first statement when he got out of jail was a very hard line statement about continuing sanctions and the armed struggle and so on. Now, Nobody noticed because they were so excited that he got out of jail. <laughs> so nobody noticed what he actually said. Uh, but then, as soon as you met him in private, he would say, um, "I, you know, of course we ha we, are, we are now going to negotiate a fully democratic solution." Um, you know, and de Klerk having taken these steps, I, I trust his good faith going forward, and we will reach an agreement. And what he was doing <laughs> was uh, was balancing the two sides of the ANC, because at that time, at this time within the ANC, the people I knew, Tembo <coughs> and Becky, Jacob Zuma at the time, uh, these guys, and Slova, were all looking for a negotiated solution because they knew that the apartheid state was far too strong just to be attacked head on. <laughs>